Hi, friends, and welcome to Screen Vomit, the only podcast for normal people. And your two favorite normals are here, uh, one being me, Kayla, and with me is my twin, Kali J. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I tried that one out. <laughs> and as we are recording... It is Halloween week, and we are double, double, toil and trouble twins only, baby. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Did you, think of, did you think of that earlier? <laughs> you just riffing? It's a fucking Mary Kate and Ashley movie. Oh my god! <laughs> the original twins, <laughs> as opposed to the oh, uh, were the fake twins then, or were the? No, we're just you know down in line in history. <laughs> <laughs> We're just, They're a little we're older just the than me. <laughs> I think Jeez. Mary Kate and Ashley are one year, one or two years older than me. Can't remember. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. What is here is that <laughs> it's me and Kali. <laughs> it's just two. <laughs> just to, it, it takes two, and that two is us, and that is also a Mary yeah. Kate and Ashley movie. So us two. Are here. Why do you know so much if you? <laughs> Oh, they were coming out as you were the same age. That <laughs> yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so you are the audience. I am the audience. I tell you, <laughs> okay, this is off topic for the pod, I guess, but on topic for what we were just talking about. When I was in middle school, huge, well, and growing up younger than that, huge Mary Kate and Ashley stan. Just absolutely uh-huh. like subscribed to their magazine, um, had multiple sets of Mary Kate and Ashley Barbie dolls and uh-huh. their whole like they had different places like that you could buy like okay. different sets. There's like the bedroom set of Mary Kate and Ashley, the movie set of Mary Kate and Ashley, whatever that you could buy for your Barbies. Had yes, them all. Yes, yes, yes. Had every movie, saw every movie they ever did. Uh, cut my hair like Mary Kate for like <laughs> two or three years. <laughs> You can tell them apart? Yes, you can tell them apart. No. And I've made people watch their um, Fox Family show so little time since then. Like, even just in the last couple of years, because I do own their Fox Family show so little time. <laughs> uh, and I do reference it on accident, and nobody knows those references. But but I've made people watch the show, and guess what? They like it. It's a bop. <laughs> I think you have a lot of nice friends. <laughs> I think you have no, some it's very, very kind friends. It's fun. They were they were fun when they were younger. Yeah, yeah. Now that they're older, a little scarier. But hey, they're trying. Um, I don't want to know what they're doing. <laughs> I just don't I, care. You know what? They can't be faulted for how they are now. No, no. But they they're, are still yeah. like billionaires maybe they're definitely millionaires if not billionaires and uh very successful business women at this point in time so you know we I love guess. a we love a girl boss yeah two girl bosses you know so <laughs> goals twin goals <laughs> good god no <laughs> 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 you're definitely the ashley in this group <laughs> do they have different personalities they do i think are they allowed to like they have to be twins, a little distinguishable. Are they, they capable? They typically, once they were over like 10, they typically had different haircuts and like acted a little different. Even like when okay. they were in It Takes Two, like the whole movie was like these two girls who look exactly the same but have completely different personality types was kind of like the premise of the movie. <laughs> they switch families and try and get their families oh, to boy. marry each other so they can be sisters. <laughs> Good grief. Life's a wild ride, you know? I don't... So this all boils down to... I don't think that... <laughs> con- you're, no. I would not... I guess they're, they've had a wild ride life, but like... Yeah. Whatever. What movie did we see? <laughs> the, no, it segues, it. actually. It actually segues. The movie we saw this week is... The Lizzie McGuire movie. Shut up. <laughs> right? The 2018 film Lizzie. No relation what? to Lizzie McGuire. <laughs> Wait, are you serious? Yeah. Oh, no. Shut Folks, <laughs> I watched the Lizzie McGuire movie this week <laughs> and not Lizzie. Me and Kali had true Uh-oh. twinergy on this one because 
Uh, I just randomly stumbled across this trailer for this movie just by it was like in my suggested videos on YouTube. And next day, Kali sends me the old text saying, hey, I just heard about this movie, Lizzie. Have you heard of it? I literally had just seen the trailer. And what? anyway, then we picked it for the ep. <laughs> And that's how these pieces came together. Yeah, so we both found out about it like in the same day, basically, uh, two years later. Just so random twinergy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that being said, let's talk about the cast of this movie. We have, of course, two killer stars in this movie. I'd say the reason we watched this movie. The reasons. Yeah. Combined the reason. Yes. Yeah. Chloe Sevigny. Of course, <sighs> from Dead Don't Die, which we previously covered on the pod. Um, she's also in Big Love and The yep. Act, which I've mentioned that I watched on the pod. And then we have K2, Kristen Stewart. Of course, everybody knows Twilight. Have we done any K2 mm -hmm. movies? Uh, I don't think not, we have. Nothing's coming to mind. I've definitely seen some in the last few years, but I uh, guess we haven't done any on the pod. That's kind of surprising. Yeah, um, that is. And then we also have wildly two of like the main players from true blood on this in this movie okay so um we have fiona it always Shaw. always comes back to true blood it does i'm telling you it's an iconic <laughs> show um tale as old as time um so we have fiona shaw who plays marnie on true blood which is one of the most badass characters in the whole show she's an incredible actress she plays the stepmom in this movie mrs dursley and harry potter for everyone else out there what okay interesting you didn't um, know that? No. That's how I know her. I didn't even look her up because I just knew her from True Blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Um, so that's cool. And then Dennis O'Hare, who plays the uncle in this movie, uh, was yeah. the king of the vampires on True Blood. So He's in a bunch of stuff, too. Yeah, he, both of them. Fiona Shaw and Dennis O'Hare are oh, both yeah. like, you know, world-renowned actors, basically. They can do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're incredible. Um, and then also we have Kim Dickens. Who we just had in Gone Girl. Oh. She plays the older sister the in sister? this, and yeah. she's the cop in Gone Girl. Oh. The whole time I was, I was watching this movie. I was wondering how I knew I, her. I know. The whole time I was watching this movie, I yeah. was like, why does this chick look so familiar? Like, yeah. I can't place it. And then I looked it up. Gone Girl. Can't believe it. It's the cop. Very cool. I know. You know. So that's kind of wild tie because we didn't even know so that's it that's pretty much the cast like the writer and the director on this are both like pretty green they haven't really done much you didn't even mention the did you mention the dad no what's he Jay in Hugh Hughley he's freaking in true detective oh I don't watch this show oh true detective incredible incredible really I love true detective that's a top 10 show really? at a minimum oh yeah What's our freaking critic scores? All right, critic scores this week. Rotten Tomatoes, we got the devil's number <laughs> part of it, 66%. Metacricket, 59. Ugh. Mm -hmm. And uh, Google users? Wildcard. 81. They always come in when you need them. All right, so let's watch the trailer and then we'll fucking get into it. Hell yeah. Okay, that was a great trailer, I think. Oh, it's outstanding. I feel like the casting of this movie is a little deranged, but I'm here for it. Deranged? I had a hard time seeing these two women in this time period in these roles. Well. Like, I, I didn't feel like they really belonged in this place, but I love them. <laughs> I was gonna say, I don't, I don't, if I had any issues about believing, I don't remember them. Yeah. Because I, the whole time, I'm just like transfixed really? by uh, every scene. It's just like, oh, Chloe Sevigny, oh, Kristen Stewart, okay, very cool. They are very so, cool. Chloe Sevigny, I have to say, I admire her so much. I think she's so cool. She is just so, such an authentic person person i feel like and like her authenticity really plays in every character that she does it's like her but with a different story do you know what i mean i oh, don't know totally. if that makes sense but no, um, she's one of my favorite actresses she's, she's she just has such an authenticity about her that it's unparalleled i think i mean you just 
Not many people reach that. Totally. She's one of the few performers who, like, if I see her name, I'll watch a movie because of it. Mm -hmm. And if nothing else, even if she's in a bad movie, you enjoy watching her. Yeah. She's never bad. Yeah, she's never bad. Mm -hmm. That's true. She fucking rocks. She does rock. And this movie was a passion project of hers. She actually produced it. Okay. And she had been trying to get this made for a while, it seems like. Um, The story I gathered from interviews with her was that she, at random, stayed at the real Lizzie Borden house, which is now a bed and breakfast. Very cool. Oh, I guess we should say, obviously, if you don't know, this movie is based off a true story. I'll get to it. We'll get to Lizzie Borden, yeah. Um, So she just randomly (laughs) decided to stay at this murder house and uh, was inspired upon staying there to make a movie about it. (laughs) Sure. When inspiration strikes, you know? Well, at first they were going to make a TV show, I think, and then it got- Ooh, no. Then it was like in talks for being a miniseries instead, and then like got switched to being a movie. So um, it's gone through some iterations, and I feel like some things have definitely been chopped. (laughs) Okay. Shut the fuck up. Just interesting story. Yeah. I feel like I'm going to have some hot takes on this movie, and I don't know if you're going to like them or if our listeners are going to like them. (laughs) I'm curious. I feel like I have zero hot takes on this movie. Because ultimately, I don't know that I loved it. All right. Um, But we'll go through it, I guess. I was excited, obviously, with the, the two main stars. I didn't, yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that the True Blood people were in it at the time that we decided to watch it, but that was like an added bonus because I love True Blood, <laughs> obviously everyone knows. And the queer, there's obviously big queer storyline happening here, which was exciting. I, though, am a little over the Lizzie Borden story being retold. Okay. It's been done and done and done and sure. done so much. I've I'd- literally never seen... But as recently as the 2014 movie with Christina Ricci, Lizzie Borden took an axe. <laughs> it has sure. been just done to death. It's like a play. It's like a hundred movies. It's TV shows. It's it's just yeah, been done over and over again. And I and enough, we know the story. Just, <laughs> it's the same thing as fuck. It's like any folk story now. Yeah. Even though it's a true story. I mean, it's the fucking rhyme, you know? It is the rhyme. Would you like to say the rhyme? <laughs> I don't know Do if remember? I remember the whole thing. <laughs> Lizzie Borden took her axe and gave her mother 40 wax. When she saw what she had done, she gave her father 41? Yeah, I think that's it. I did not look it up. But that's uh, pretty much it, I think. <laughs> it rhymes. Yeah, she, she chopped up both right. her patients. <laughs> she bonked both her parents with an axe. Well, allegedly. I'll go through details like kind of as they come up, but the basic story is... This is late 1800s, uh, 1892, that a man and a woman who were married to each other were murdered, and the killer was never found, necessarily. So there's just, like, a lot of speculation around it. Lizzie herself is obviously a big suspect, but was never convicted, uh, and no one has ever been convicted. So it's like a Jack the Ripper scenario, actually in mm-hmm. every aspect, in that Jack the Ripper has also been done and done and done and done. <laughs> and the murder were, murderer was never caught or convicted, but did some crazy murders. So there's all kinds of speculations about what went on in the house, who actually killed these people, or what happened. And so it just continues to be made into movies for the rest of eternity. Um, And this was in Massachusetts. Yeah, Yeah, let's go through this old ass movie. All right. So we open up with the murders on this one, August 4th, 1892, Mm -hmm. that what we find out later is Lizzie's stepmom and dad have both been murdered. Flashback six months earlier, and then we start the story. Yeah. So we find out pretty up top that like Lizzie's parents suck, basically. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, they're both just like dicks they are dicks the stepmom i think takes a little longer in the movie to appear as an asshole like at first you don't really know what her position is i would say maybe even until like halfway through the movie which is i feel like they should have made it more clear i'm also just conditioned to not like fiona shaw i'm just like oh fiona shaw or stepmoms 
Little column A, little column B. <laughs> little column A, little column B. Mm-hmm. I'll never say what my last name is. <laughs> I'm sure we've said it on the pod before. <laughs> <Please>. um, <laughs> we do have the same last name. <laughs> 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 Maybe, but like, no, she... In this role, like, even as you see her, like, what, what, what verb would I use? Toting around. Or the, the way she talks, it's like, oh, she's just... She's a dick. Yeah. In real life, Lizzie's birth mother died when she was three of like a urinary blockage, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, Her sister is nine years older than her, and her sister kind of raised her from being a baby until their dad met this woman, their stepmom, three years after their mother's death. Neither of the girls had a great relationship with this stepmom. They did not like her. They thought she was a gold digger. Their dad was very rich, very, very wealthy for the time. And he would give this stepmom's family gifts Mm -hmm. of like huge plots of land or like (sighs) things like that. And the girls didn't like that. They didn't think it was fair. Mm -hmm. They just thought she was a gold digger meanie. Yeah. And the older sister, I think her name's Emma, you know, yes. in some ways felt kind of threatened because her position was the motherly figure of Lizzie. Oh, so okay. having this other woman coming in and being like, no, I'm the mom now, kind of threw off their dynamic or whatever. Sure. So neither of them liked her. <laughs> hey, look. <laughs> Relatable, Callie? <laughs> this this podcast has made its stance on stepmothers known. <laughs> Me and Callie both have stepmoms. Callie's is bad. Real bad. We have, we have complicated feelings, yeah. My stepmom was fine for a while. She's bad now, I think. And she's been bad for a long time, but I don't have to talk to her no more. Um, so Anyway, moving on. So Lizzie's dad is trying to stop her from going out to the theater to see an opera? Yes, an opera. You kind of gather that she's being, like, restricted. She wants to go out and party and have fun. Yeah. And the dad's yeah. like... You can't just be out on the town by yourself. Like, don't you know who you are? (laughs) She's freaking 32, by the way. Yeah, yeah. What a life. She goes to the theater. She roasts the chick in the bathroom. (laughs) Oh, my God. That was incredible. (laughs) She does have, like, some really good roasting lines in this movie. Yeah. Uh, I did not write down what the lines were here, but I just remember thinking it was very clever. In those days, how many people you think... Because operas are long, right? Operas are like yeah. three some hours. Mm-hmm. How many people you think are just sitting in those seats, pooping and or peeing themselves? Oh, I'm sure they went to the bathroom. No, no, no. Too much think? of a hassle. Diapies? How many of them do you think were in diapies? Ooh. I feel like there's a lot of things that happened, uh, quote unquote, back in those days. <laughs> that we don't know about. Yeah. Because even at that time, like having plumbing and electricity were not, most yeah. people didn't have those things. Yeah. So it is like, I haven't really thought about what did people do at theaters when there was not plumbing. Huh. Do do in their hands and then throw it on the stage. That's interesting. All right. Uh, tweet us with what did people do with their <laughs> shit? <laughs> Before plumbing <laughs> at theaters. At a house, sure, you have an oh, outhouse. Man. At a theater? I don't know. What do they do? Uh- <laughs> Especially periods? Oh my gosh. Nightmare. Uh, the olden times. Any time, I have acknowledged this before, but I would not have been suitable to live any time before, I don't know, 1970. Yeah, and even then, dodgy. Oh, good grief, yeah. I don't even think I would have made it in the 80s. Just keep me right... Hey, I'm a 90s kid, all right? Let's get that on air. I like being a 90s kid. I'm technically born in the 80s, but I consider myself a 90s kid because that was my formative culture. Yeah, Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. How would I feel about being back in the day? Being queer, it just like adds a cloud over it. But if oh, I yeah. if I were not, if I were cis and straight, <laughs> if you were me, besides spiders, I think I could make it. It's so cold all the time. Well, they had more clothes back then. <laughs> so hot all the time. 
<laughs> that oh that is true you know what i'm not great with heat here this is i think about this all the time i would have died back then yeah i got this freaking nut allergy i can't see for mm. shit yeah i got bad allergies but do you think we have reverse evolved though <laughs> i i think to an extent we have yeah because I think we have. I, I believe that. I have no science to back that up. If we were more conditioned to like deal with those things on the daily, I don't think that they would be as much issue. Like, because back in the day, you're eating more of like shit you grew on your farm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like you're eating a lot better. You're having more exercise because you're, you know, doing more physical labor around your own home and farm and whatever. I guess I'm just assuming everybody lives on a farm. <laughs> I think I I don't know when I think about what are olden times like my mind goes to my Amish family Farm. who live in Indiana <laughs> who on farms uh and also like my family in Mississippi because our family homes down there they've been in our family for like hundreds of years and yeah. they're on farms <laughs> so I guess my mind kind of goes to farms but things did exist that were not farms so yeah. what do those people they've- do all day <laughs> <laughs> they figured out ways to deal with their doo-doo and caca. Be- oh, they're probably like cobblers and like blacksmiths and like a lot more manual labor kind of jobs too. Yeah. Anyway, how did we get here? <laughs> uh, people pissing and shitting in their britches <laughs> at, the, at the opera. Oh, God. Off the rails this early. So she's at the theater and she has a seizure. And the seizures mm-hmm. happen sporadically throughout the movie as well. I mean, it sucks. You can tell that she, like, hates that she's trying to be strong and then she, like, gets out of control of her body, you know? Yeah. And it's kind of sad. I don't know. I guess I didn't ever read if she had seizures in real life. Or at least it never came up in my research. So maybe she didn't in real life. I have no clue. It just creates, like, another layer of her character for which the father to be, like, disapproving of. Yeah, and another way that she's not in control of her life and her body. Totally. like a ma- Almost like a physical manifestation of it. Yeah, sure. Next scene, we get her reading to the doves, which is big gay energy. <laughs> uh, I'm Just sorry, Just reading what? poetry to my birds. <laughs> Bur- are birds gay? Are Thinking birds of a queer? woman sitting alone reading poetry to her birds, that seems queer to me. <laughs> <laughs> You you're walking in the park. You see you see someone uh-huh. reading reading poetry to a flock of pigeons, yep. and you're like, "Hello, fam." Yeah, you're like flying the flag, walking yep. over. We do the gay nod and we carry on. That's one of the like. I don't go. I'm not invited to the to the queer community meetings. Uh-huh. Uh But like, I, it's okay. I understand. I understand. But, you know. Is what it is. Some things are just a vibe, and if you don't have it, you can't get on that wavelength, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not invited to the meetings where you all discuss, like, your secret ways to identify each other. Yeah. But, is, but like, feeding to the pigeons, or reading to the pigeons, rather. Reading to them specifically. <laughs> Do you feed them and then read? The feeding, feed and read? feeding could go either way. <laughs> <laughs> reading poetry to pigeons? Uh, that's gay energy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell yeah. So, we haven't even mentioned case Stu yet. No. She is their new maid, I guess. Sure. She's Irish. <laughs> oh, yeah. What do you rate this accent? Because <laughs> throughout the movie, I was like, this is good. I was like, this is good, right? Is this good? This is good, right? (laughs) I would say, like, the first word or two of every sentence was definitely in an Irish accent. (laughs) (laughs) And many of her sentences were only two words, which kind of made me think... uh, It helped. ...that (laughs) they probably did that on purpose because she was not achieving the goal. (laughs) They They were one more, like tacking on one more day of production's worth of being like, <laughs> fuck it, she's mute. Yeah. <laughs> like, she's mute, but she like, can be Irish. Literally, for like the first 50 minutes of this movie, she doesn't say more than two words in a row. <laughs> yeah. To yeah. be fair, though, like, it, it works for her character. 
Yeah, it was fun. I I like that she tried. I'm not angry at her not being able to master an Irish accent. I think it was fun. It's a difficult one to master. (laughs) Shit. I really don't think it would have played if she was just straight up American. No. Because I already had such a hard time picturing her in this time period. (laughs) Yeah, she's a difficult one. I I, think they should... (laughs) She did not fit in this time period. I'm sorry. (laughs) No. She's fine in this, okay? I also like, forgot how large her ears were, not to body shame, but... <laughs> I do want to point out they really that they, like... really stuck out in this movie, if you hear me. They did. <laughs> and it doesn't help that, like, the hairstyle they gave her for this... Yeah, it didn't help her at all. <laughs> ...looks like a modern-day queer cut. <laughs> it's, like, just, like, long on the top, short on the sides, you know? I think it was just like the way they put it up or something. I oh, don't that's know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the way they pinned it, it looked like the queer. It looks like a queer cut. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like, of course. I think that K. Stu signed on to this movie just to be able to f Chloe Sevigny. <laughs> God, we gotta get. We, we have to go. It's through. a little. It's way farther in the movie, but it's so much farther. <laughs> okay, so this is where. Lizzie and Casey start to have like a bit of a, at this point, budding friendship. Lizzie doesn't have many <laughs> friends. She kind of takes Case Two under her wing and is like starting to teach her a little bit, like how to read and, ha- and yeah, how yeah. to write and stuff like that. Cause she's just uh, a maid. She doesn't really have any education and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Lizzie sees her for who she is, like asks her real name instead of letting her be called Maggie. Which is like the Irish version of how all like Latinx women are Maria. Yeah, yeah. It's so crazy though because her real name is Bridget. Mm-hmm. At that time, like, weren't Irish people still considered like a different race and like oh yeah, there was still or like, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Irish people did not have great, didn't have it great for a bit before we were assimilated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so she is called Maggie by the family, but Bridget by Lizzie only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they they are growing close. They're doing fine, yeah. We get the feminist line, men don't have to know things Bridget women do. Oh, yeah. Girl power. (laughs) Girl power, yeah. Girl boss. uh, (laughs) (laughs) This movie did have some girl boss feminist energy. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'll have more to say on that when we get to the end, I think. Yeah. So the dad starts getting some threats. He's getting letters such as no one will save you from what is to come or your like sin that. will find you. These are all things that I should write and like tape <laughs> tape on the mirror so I can look at them in the morning and be like, dude, write right. it on your mirror and lipstick and let Lindsay <laughs> wake up to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one will save you as, uh, from what's to come. Yeah. Anyway. So he's getting threatening letters. There's one night where he, there's like a, a somebody pounding on the door in the middle of the night, and then they open it up and nobody's there. That's oh. a little scary. And yeah. we find out that he's like a loan shark and basically is a landlord and also works at the bank. He owns everybody's properties just... and probably is constantly taking people's shit from them. He is a comically, uh, like he has so many levels of evil. Yeah. Of just, he's got too many things going. There's nothing, like, good about this guy. But also, all those jobs are real. (laughs) Yeah, no, totally. That was his real shit, uh, which is crazy. We should toss a trigger warning on this. Trigger warning Um, for rape in this movie. (sighs) You don't really ever see anything, necessarily. It's more suggested. Yeah. But it's still pretty gross. Yeah. It's very gross. Yeah. He makes some suggestive comments to K-Stu, kind of implying that he expects her to sleep with him or be Mm. fired. And that unfortunately happens. Like, he goes into her room in the middle of the night, and that becomes a thing throughout the movie that he's having sex with her. Yeah. And that sucks. This is a... Dudes do not rock in this movie. No. There's really only two dudes, right? Yeah, and they both suck. Yeah, true. 
and the next dude is coming right up because um, <laughs> basically next scene, um, dad is making his will. He's rewriting his will um, because of the threats that he's getting and stuff like that. Yeah. And Lizzie overhears him talking with her uncle who has come to stay with them. He low-key wants to send Lizzie away to whatever, a psychiatric hospital or something. She doesn't really seem to be mentally ill, I don't think. No. But by by 1800 standards. <laughs> oh, yeah. She was a lunatic. <laughs> yeah, she's, I was like, oh, look, I'm not a, a psychiatrist, but like, I would say she probably just has like, I don't know, at minimum anxiety, disorder, uh, some anxiety disorder. Yeah, and there is speculation that she was actually queer. Mm -hmm. You know, probably specifically lesbian. And this movie implies that Maggie is real. Yeah, I mean... Or Bridget, rather. Bridget is a real person that did exist in real life. Yeah. Did, did they have a romantic relationship? Was never confirmed. Mm -hmm. But it was speculated. Sure. You know, people have said, like, it just seems to make sense that they were in it together that they were in some kind of cahoots to get the people who end up dying killed mm -hmm. um that they had some kind of relationship but there's no confirmation so we'll never okay. really know but there has been other people that lizzie had been in a relationship with or spent nights with let's say oh. <laughs> um over throughout time including like one movie star that rocks Work that fame. Yeah, probably an issue here was that she was so, you know, she had like a rich, prosperous family or whatever. And mm -hmm. at this point in time, like you really have to keep a certain appearance, you know, of being fancy. And she's a lesbian and it's the 18 fucking hundreds and you can't just be who you are. That probably yeah. drives you a little crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and having even... to live with your crazy shit ass parents exactly uh, into your thirties—that's fucking traumatizing. Yeah, not be able to like really be loved or express yourself the way you want to for all that time. Yeah, maybe she is like a little got some stuff going on, but I don't mm -hmm. think she has like a disorder. <laughs> no, no, nothing that would require like inpatient treatment. Right. So the uncle comes to stay with them, uh, and. They don't say this in the movie, but he is the birth mother's brother, their real mom. And okay. uh, in real life, he came, he did come to stay with them the night before the murder. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, he's come to stay with them. It's the guy from True Blood. He rocks. Uh, I mean, in the movie, he's a piece of shit, though. And you find out that their real mom is dead because I didn't know that even the woman there wasn't their real mom. It takes a minute. I mean, yeah. at least. Yeah, the movie didn't express that it wasn't their real mom uh, yeah. until this point when their dad gives Lizzie a locket with the pic of her mom in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the picture that's in the locket is a picture of Lizzie Borden's real actual mom, IRL. Wow. Lizzie is trying to get out of here. She knows that her dad wants her in an institution and she's got to do something to not let that happen basically yes. yeah because <laughs> it'll be over for her if she gets to an institution so she sells a bunch of jewelry and makes it look like a burglary and dad mm -hmm. finds out like instantly <laughs> yeah <laughs> that it was yeah, not yeah. a burglary <laughs> and he kills all her pigeons in response and serves them up for dinner i looked away it was rough i like birds a lot Birds yeah. fucking rock. Mm -hmm. Did not like this scene. Also, we're both vegetarian. <laughs> yeah, not a not a fan of of seeing birds chopped up like this. No, with like also her having a full like breakdown, screaming and crying. Also, uh, it's rough. It was really rough. It's fucking wild. And like this is. He just does this evil shit the entire time. Yeah, he sucks ass. Nothing he does is neutral. There's no neutral moves. Like, he never even postures as, like, a good guy for a second. He's just, like, pure fucking evil. Yeah. No, yeah, like, literally everything about him is pure evil. His yeah. jobs are evil. <laughs> yeah. He's a rich fucking ass. <laughs> At a time when there weren't many rich people. Yeah, totally. Yeah, he just sucks. They serve the pigeons up for dinner, and it is... This scene was really 
good <laughs> and pungent. <laughs> I don't know. It was like yeah. y- you could feel it. Yeah. The way that Lizzie was feeling at this time, watching her beloved birds be served up to everyone for dinner and just like mm-hmm. being nauseous and sad and angry and everything. That was rough. Yeah, this movie, I mean, it's tough to watch. There's a, just a lot of fucking abuse in it. Yeah. That's a, that's what it is. It's just like tons and tons of sexual, verbal, physical abuse, mm-hmm. mental abuse, like so many fucking layers here. Yeah, absolutely. And so she tries to take back a little bit of power, whatever, makes some quip and storms up to her room and locks all the yeah. doors. But then she has a seizure and has kind of like lost that power again. It's tough. Things are not looking good for old Elizabeth Borden. No. And then Bridget's mom dies. And oh, yeah. This scene was rough. It was. It was very sad. Sad. Um, and then it's extra rough when, trigger warning again, the dad goes over to Bridget and is like, sorry about your mom, but uh, I'm here for you now and rapes her again. Like, Yeah. Ugh. Your mom is dead. Here, let me just rape you real to help. Yeah, it's fucking... <laughs> Look, I am not a person who is like, old movies should be nice people, or like whatever that fucking tweet is. Like, like I get it that like you to show someone's evil, they have to de- like show their evil through their actions or yeah. words or deeds or whatever. But like... But you don't think we needed all the rape? I, because I don't. did not need all of it. <laughs> Four or five scenes of it. Yeah. And then and here like, soon, too, there's another one, like an almost rape from the uncle. Yeah, that one, that fucking one, yeah. And I think that those things are really where you can tell that this movie was directed by a man, honestly. Oh. You can feel it. And don't love. Yeah, when the credits came up at the end of the movie and it was like first thing directed by, oh, a man, no surprise. I absolutely knew it was a man. And when the second rape happened, or the, um, when the uncle, yeah, the, yeah. the, uh, the almost rape, that was really like, we absolutely did not need that. And no woman would have done that and probably wouldn't have even put in the, the first series of sexual assaults because we already have this dad established as an evil, man we don't need him to be a rapist too he already had such like a power advantage yeah it was already so clear he had such a power advantage he was already like being controlling and like verbally abusive at least physically intimidating her yeah 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 to both bridget and lizzie we did not need him to be taking advantage of bridget and we did not need the uncle thing that i mentioned too we just don't need it. There's just a time and place. Like, I, I don't, I am not the person to fucking discuss this. You know, I have no mm-hmm. fucking authority on this. But, like, I, I think depiction of sexual assault in movies is, like, blanket. Like, you, I think it's okay to depict it. I don't think it should be, a, you know, illegal. If it adds something to the story. But it, exactly. It yeah. has to be. It's not something you should throw in willy-nilly. And it felt very fucking willy-nilly. Or for fun. Because yeah. it's not fun. Women are traumatized by this all the time. Yeah. Whether or not it's actively happening. You know the statistics. And we don't need it just to be extravagant. We just don't need it. Yeah. It's not necessary. We don't need it. If it adds something to the story, there is a time and place, sure, in storytelling where that can be a useful tool. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel like it was a useful tool in this movie, and I don't feel like it added anything. Nothing that hadn't, yeah, nothing that hadn't already been established. Hadn't already been said, yeah, yeah. It was already clear he's abusive, yeah. So we're on the same page with that. And also, you know what else, is that when they establish that that is happening with him and Bridget, and and that the stepmom is in the other room listening, and she knows that it's happening, Mm -hmm. I feel like it actually, like, counteracts the story a little bit, because... You would think that that would make her be more against him and like create some kind of unity with the other women or something. It I don't made know. me sympathize with her a little bit. I felt bad about how she was treated later on in the end of the movie. But it's just ultimately. like him doing that to another woman should make her hate him and not be like unified with him like how they are throughout the movie. I'll tell you what. I, I'm not a historian, mm-hmm. but the uh, one thing I know about, like, the 1900s, the 1800s, pretty much all of time, 
hates women, just has not yeah. been kind mm-hmm. to their position. And you, you'd think like, okay, yeah, she'd definitely be on our side, but there's like, no, why would I trust this Irish woman, first of all? Mm-hmm. And then this woman who I fucking hate, this other daughter. Mm-hmm. Of course she wouldn't. She should have been the one to deliver the 41 wax. No, nah, I think Maggie. I mean, that's also been speculated. I mean, you think, well, you think the wife did it? No, the wife gets murdered. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, don't, yes. I think Maggie's been speculated. Okay. Anyway, Hachi Machi. We're rolling around. So Lizzie finds out about the rapes and sprinkles a broken mirror glass outside the door so that when he comes out, he's going to step on that glass and cut his feet all up. I thought that was pretty nice little solidarity. I like that. Yeah, it was just a believable scene. Because she's also pretty powerless against this man. You know? Exactly. Yeah. So she can't exactly just like bust down the door and confront that, him. Yeah. I understand that. But she can make him hurt still. <laughs> That's direct action in the workplace, baby. And it That's was making change. smart. Yeah. Now, after that, they're in love, I guess. Uh, or at least yeah. horny for each other. <laughs> hey, I'll take what I can get. With these two. <laughs> There's a scene of Keisu dressing Lizzie. And yeah. they do like, <laughs> I feel like it's like three <laughs> minutes long. It is too long of them just like their mouths. <laughs> it's like there's like. Their mouths like shifting close to each other, not touching, no touching, opening and shutting, kind it's of like some like breathing. <laughs> that never quite comes together. That's perfect. <laughs> They're just kind getting, of moving getting in closer, and out. farther away, closer, farther away. Opening the mouth a little bit, shutting it a little bit, doing some breathing. Okay, look, it's, it's like intimate non-kissing. I don't know. It's a fake out kissing scene. <laughs> was it very hot? Uh, you bet your bottom dollar it was. I don't know. It was a little like um, blue ballsy. Like, give me something. Okay, <laughs> give me at least one smooch at the end. You're, you know, like you're like. Show me the bush or get the fuck out. I need a climax here. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. So that was, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about (laughs) that scene. It was dumb. It was dumb. It was dumb, and it was just way too long, too. Like, I felt like it went on for so long. Without a doubt. They could have kissed. (laughs) Then Lizzie sees the weird uncle leave one of these death threat notes at the door. And that's when we get, like, them having a confrontation and him, like, almost raping her. Yeah. Unnecessary. But Case 2 interrupted them, so it didn't actually go through, but did not need any of that. Yeah, didn't TBH. do anything. You know what? I didn't think of this, but this is the order that it happens. That Lizzie finds out that Kristen is being raped by her dad, and then next day they have the fake out kissing scene. Mm-hmm. And then that night is where the uncle almost rapes Lizzie. And then next day, they fully fuck in the barn. It's like each one, once they find out the other one is being raped, now they're horny for each other. <laughs> and this scene goes on forever, too. I gotta say, I I have mixed feelings about actually their whole relationship, but the sex scene, too. Lindsay went up and went to the bathroom and came back and it was still going on. I... Okay, so I guess I'll just break it down. First of all, I think that them two dating or being romantic with each other. Yeah. Don't love it. I mean, Didn't I gotta make say. make a ton of sense. As individual queer icons, yes, stand each of them individually, of course. But together, they are 15 years age difference. Case 2 looks young for her age. Chloe Sevigny looks exactly her age but in hollywood years that means old for her age so like the age difference there it just looks like a mom making out with a daughter or something and i don't love that that doesn't that just doesn't make me horny okay i know that's (laughs) trending on Pornhub, (laughs) but it's not for me okay (laughs) so there's that firstly going on yeah 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 but secondly and here's a pro i historically and i think i've probably said it on pod They never, ever show lesbian sex scenes in anything, even in queer content. No. Very, very rarely. Very, very rarely. It is almost always 
if there's like a lesbian sex scene in a movie or show or anything, it's like, let's get in the covers and do one kiss. Hee 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 hee. Fade to black. Fade back to white. Now we have no shirts on and we are still under the covers and it's all done. Let's go to bed now. <laughs> That's what like, happens, right? <laughs> because I think that um, filmmakers, TV show makers, whatever, people don't know what lesbian sex is. Are, they're unclear on what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and therefore don't know what to do with it when confronted by it in their storytelling. They so, never got the memo, yeah. So it is never depicted. So I was very happy that it was fully depicted to completion. <laughs> oh, yeah. In this movie. And I have to think that that was something that they specifically <laughs> fought for. <laughs> fought for fought for the <laughs> orgasm. Sure. Chloe's like, look, I'm not cashing up the dough if you don't let me fully fuck to completion. <laughs> So I did enjoy just the theoretical general aspect of there being a full lesbian sex scene in a movie that is weirdly like rare and iconic. Okay. Yes. I am here for that. Uh, I was too. But everything else about this is weird. (laughs) 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 Because I didn't like the two actors together. And then we get Peeping Tom Dad, which fucks up the whole vibe. Okay, how am I supposed supposed to J.O. with Dad peeping in the window? (laughs) (laughs) No, thank you. (laughs) Yeah, not great. And that was gross. (laughs) I mean, I, I was trying to think, like, does it even contribute to the story it does in as much as after he finds out that they're fucking then he threatens that he well he basically tells maggie that he's going to fire her he cannot have them being gay together and there was speculation that that may have been what actually happened too is that lizzie it may not have even been with maggie necessarily but Mm -hmm. with someone that him or the stepmom caught her being intimate with another woman and had a bad reaction to it. And that's why they ended up dead. It's all speculation, but sure, it's, sure, sure. it's a theory that floats somewhere. Oh, and he also tells Lizzie, oh, this was, this was another quip that Lizzie came back with, that he said, you're an abomination, Lizzie. And she said, then at least we're on equal footing. Whoa, okay, Lizzie coming in with the hot fire. (laughs) You know how people talked in 1892. I thought that was a great comeback. (laughs) It was great. It was, I loved it. I loved it. It's like we're both abominations. But once he says that he's going to fire Maggie and tells Lizzie that she's an abomination, then it's like, okay, there's a countdown here because Lizzie wants Maggie to stay around and Mm -hmm. also doesn't want to be an abomination. So... (laughs) (laughs) so something's got to give here um and she sets her dad's will on fire that was cool it was cool i was very into that i thought that was a fine little under or like b story to like yeah because it gave a little more like there's a time bomb on this it's a reason why something has to be done now you know it's a it's a breaking point yeah between that and like the time limit on maggie being fired they are reasons why something has to be done now specifically and not just like oh it's another day of my dad being abusive then we fast forward back to august 4th or is it just the next day might just be the next day yeah it's the next day we've caught up to it now his dead face looks badass big old like gash on the left side of it his eye was split in half uh irl (laughs) that Uh, rocks yeah so pretty crazy um so stepmom and dad are both dead and have been allegedly axed to death although they never quite placed a murder weapon they're kind of talking about how he had one of the largest fortunes in new england um Mm. and at the time of his death irl he was worth three hundred thousand dollars which translates to about 8.6 million today check please yeah all right big ass money back then damn for sure and he was very frugal like even though mm-hmm. they were wealthy, he didn't have uh, they didn't have working plumbing or electricity in their home. They did not live in a mansion. They they had like a relatively big house, but it's just a normal 
house. They didn't like live extravagantly at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He held on to everyone else's money from being a landlord and a banker and whatever. (laughs) Yeah, he fucking sucked. Uh, And when they like showed his face, I was like, oh, so they're just not going to show the how the death happened. Mm -hmm. I was like, I just like accepted it, and I was like, I'm just glad they showed the corpse because. That, like, you can infer enough from that, like, corpse. You're like, he fucking suffered. That rocks. That's a brutal death. Hell yeah. And they think that Lizzie did it. But yeah. um, at this point in the movie, we don't exactly know who did it or what happened. No. The older sister is being really protective of her. I wish that the older sister actually had more of a play in this movie. Me too, yeah. Because she was really? good. She's a good character. The real story of her is good. The real mm-hmm. relationship is good. Um, but she's barely in the movie. Yeah. She doesn't have much impact. No. But she's being protective here and yeah. um, saying that Lizzie's not going to plead guilty. And they're like, if she doesn't plead guilty, she'll be hanged. So love our justice system. <laughs> I w- they kept, they said that and I was like, that's not how it works. Like, that's. It kind of like, sort of is, though. <laughs> I mean, like... To some degree. To some degree, and it's going to depend on what the crime is. But, like, if you plead guilty to something, whether or not you are guilty, really, it's irrelevant once you get into the courts. Yeah, totally. But um, if you are guilty of something and you plead not guilty, but you are found guilty, then it's kind of like you have no remorse for what you've done, and they give you way more punishment. So if you do plead guilty, your time can go way down just because you're saying you're resolving it yeah and you're like yes i did it and i'm gonna face my punishment and whatever so your time can be dramatically reduced by pleading guilty oh yeah irl i mean that's what my fucking with like traffic tickets you have like my parents were always like just plead guilty to it like never Mm -hmm. i tell you what i did appeal it once and it uh went in my favor so I beat the I system. appealed one time, and uh, they just kept sending me the ticket. <laughs> 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 so I ended up just paying it. <laughs> I sent pictures and everything. I was like, no, this ticket is wrong. <laughs> uh, it didn't oh, matter. Man. I paid the ticket. Anyway. Anyway. They, IRL, were criticized for not doing a great job of gathering evidence or, like, investigating the household or anything. So oh, it is speculated <laughs> that, like, a lot of evidence was probably destroyed. But they yeah. did find the hatchet uh, that was found in the movie was a real thing with no handle on it. Uh, it was also bird guts on there or whatever. Ugh. Oh, okay. Lizzie was told she was a suspect, IRL. Mm -hmm. but not taken in and next day was seen burning a dress (laughs) she (laughs) she told whoever saw her burning the dress i think it was a maid or something she told them that uh she had leaned up against wet paint and ruined the dress but who knows the dress is burned (laughs) incredible And there was, like, she was seen going in and out of, like, a basement with a water basin or something. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And, like, possibly cleaning things. It's, like, who knows? It's all speculation. It's all, (laughs) you know, somebody saw something. But um, the evidence gathering was shoddy. They didn't want to disturb this rich family, you know? (laughs) (laughs) And uh, so, yeah, a lot of things were lost in that sense. What happened? Oh, we have the trial now, right? So she's oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. she's in jail during the trial. It comes back and forth through the trial and the day of, I think. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Bridget testifies on her behalf and then also comes to visit her, mm-hmm. visit Lizzie. And when she comes to visit Lizzie in jail, she looks like a skeleton. She looks like shit, yeah. She looks crazy. She looks like real ones, though. Twilight, the last movie. <laughs> When she's about to have the baby? <laughs> I do not know. What? Wait, you've never seen all the Twilights? Not all of them. Ah! I'm a poser, yeah. We'll get to it. I want to we'll watch... talk later about it. I want to watch the other Twilights with you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um, I want to watch them. You have to watch... Wait, we'll, we'll talk Maybe. about it Yeah. Um... So she looks like a damn skeleton. And this nobody could look like a skeleton quite like Case do. I don't know what it is about her. <laughs> she pulls it off well. She looks like a skeleton. 
So then, zoom back to Day of the Murders, we get the murdering the stepmom scene, mm-hmm. which was an incredible reveal. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I just, I yelped. Ah, so. An, yes, yes. They set up an elaborate plan with yeah, yeah, between yeah. Maggie and Lizzie. Maggie slash Bridget. I, I've kind of used them interchangeably. We've, yeah. <laughs> They're the We've same person. Back and forth. <laughs> Maggie and Lizzie have set up an elaborate plan of like passing a note, putting someone in a certain place at a certain time, whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that first of all, Lizzie is going to murder the stepmom. So she takes off all her clothes. And hides in the corner of the room fully naked. Almost like hereditary. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the one, <laughs> when the mom's like up in the fucking corner of the ceiling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like kind of the same vibe. <laughs> Very similar. Ooh. She just like turns around and Lizzie's there like fully nude with a hatchet. <laughs> yep. It rocked. And um, Lizzie... F- Fucking chops the fuck out of her. IRL, she was struck 18 times with this axe, Oof. hatchet. What? What's the difference between an axe and a hatchet? I do not know. I picture an axe to be bigger. A hatchet is you know, like a, I a do hand too. axe. Yeah. I kind of agree. All right. In the movie, they call it a hatchet. But the yeah. rhyme is an axe, so it's throwing me off. Either way, she struck with one of those. <laughs> yeah. 18 times. Then she has to, like, sneak through the house all naked and bloody and crazy. (laughs) It rocked. Chloe has said about this choice of being nude uh, during the murders that Mm -hmm. she wanted people to see her character in all her female form and be confronted by it. And that it's about shedding the corsets that represent all of these social restraints and going carnal. Interesting, I guess. It's like mm. supposed to be metaphorical. Sure. Of like that's I'm, a take. I'm shedding everything that has kept me closed and restrained, uh, including my clothes and including my parents. Look, I'm not gonna complain about any of the logic behind it. You just and you were just along for the ride. <laughs> I am just I'm happy to be here. I, I this yeah. whole scene, I'm Have just to agree. <laughs> just saying like this is I'm Two thumbs up from me. This is one great film. Yeah. and I'm then, enjoying it. <laughs> so right after this, or, you know, two hours later in the movie, 90 minutes later, k Stu gets naked to kill the dad, which I guess is her part of it. Outstanding. Just delightful. But she can't do it. And oh my God, the performance when she's like freaking out and like chickening out of murdering the dad or whatever, holding the axe. Oh, she was outstanding. Maybe the best performance I've ever seen come out of k TBH. Yeah, very believable. Uh, uh, this like panic attack almost. Yeah. Not almost. And she's like kind of having like a mental break kind of and yeah, um, yeah. just freaking out and like can't go through with it. And then of course Lizzie steps in and takes over the axe and finishes the deed does what needs to be done yeah, yeah of killing the dad but Kesu in that part was incredible i i wholeheartedly agree and was that her first titty scene as far as i know i don't know i guess i haven't seen a ton of them she was in another movie maybe last year where she mm-hmm. played a french model actor like based on a real story where she had lots of titty scenes <laughs> oh very cool <laughs> <laughs> like that. But I think this came out a year, a year before that, so this may be the first one. Hell anyway, yeah. it was sick. <laughs> yeah. It's not I, really sexual, it. but it is very nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm like, yeah, whatever logic you want to do, that's just fine. You just, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So then Lizzie has to kill the rest of her pigeons oh. to get the blood on the axes. And she burns the axe handle, which we kind of brought up a minute ago. Yeah. And when k finds her in jail again, she makes her promise not to write to her or look for her. So it's kind of yeah. like we're broke up now, which is sad. Yeah. How could she give up on her? Yeah. Well, I think, yeah, because. I understand. Uh, yeah. <laughs> once, you, <laughs> once you see someone you like commit murder, 
and be normal afterwards. <laughs> I, I get it. Yeah. I don't know if I could look at someone the same either. I need context. IRL, though, they were together for 12 years after this. Oh, wow. But it's never exactly even still like confirmed that they had something going on or didn't, I think. Uh, okay. <laughs> but they stayed together uh, in each other's <sighs> company, let's say, for 12 years. And it was... Again, speculated that they broke up when uh, Maggie found out that Lizzie actually did the murders. <laughs> oh. Because then she moved to Montana and married a man. <laughs> Ooh. It's interesting. It's fun. And as far as, far as the court case goes, uh, a jury of all men deliberated for 90 minutes before coming back with a not guilty verdict. Um, and they did not believe a woman of her social standing could commit such a heinous crime. So Thank yeah, you we dudes. just kind of get yeah. Th- thanks, men. Uh, we kind of get like a little post story text of her and her sister were estranged. IRL, her and her sister lived together for a bit, but they got in a fight after the woman actress that I mentioned that Lizzie was allegedly having an affair with. Um, spent the night a few times. Oh. <laughs> her and her sister got in a fight, and then they stopped talking to each other. So it's kind of assumed that she also found out about Lizzie's queerness and yeah. wasn't chill. And I already mentioned what happened with Bridget. Bridget died at 82 in Montana. Mm-hmm. Liz died of pneumonia at, well... In the movie, they say she died at 67, but she was actually 66, so I have to say <laughs> the movie oh. was wrong. <laughs> it, it, it was it was a couple months before her 67th birthday, so gotta say. Um, okay. <laughs> and uh, she left most of her money to, like, animal charities. Humane societies. It said humane society said, yeah. in the movie, but it wasn't exactly the humane society, but that's fine. We'll just say, for all intents and purposes, humane society. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So just, I have like some more facts on the real life Lizzie Borden. Uh, Yeah. She gave a bunch of conflicting information to cops at the time that the investigation was going on. She kept changing her story and was like, that's cool. Generally being weird and suspicious. (laughs) Very cool. Then they had like an uh, inquisition or something where they like, Maybe like similar to like a deposition. I don't know where like they yeah. it, they interview her before the charges, and then the interview part was supposed to be used uh, in the trial. Sure, but uh, she had been prescribed morphine to calm her nerves, <laughs> so they suspect that this may have affected her testimony because um, yeah. her behavior was like a little erratic and wild. She often refused to answer a question, even if the answer would be beneficial to her to answer. That's she, incredible. She often contradicted herself and provided alternating accounts of the morning in question. Like she would say she was in the kitchen reading a magazine when her father arrived home. Then she would say yeah. she was in the dining room doing some ironing. And then she would say she was coming down the stairs. Then she would say she was outside. Um, <laughs> Um, I'm so glad she got away with it. She also said that she removed her father's boots and put slippers on him when he came home. But police photographs clearly showed him wearing the boots. So she never removed the boots. Um, So her story was like all over the place. And the whole testimony was later ruled inadmissible at her trial. So (laughs) Outstanding. I love it. I love to see justice done. If she did do it. It is honestly wild. Like, people compare it to, like, O.J. Simpson trial. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In in that, like, basically all the evidence is there. I, she probably did. But there were other people, like, Maggie could have done it. The uncle could have done it. Like, they thought that they yeah. got in a fight over estates and stuff and money. It's um, not as cut and dry. Yeah. But, like, all the evidence that, that there <laughs> points towards... Towards Lizzie. Towards Lizzie, yeah. And, like, (laughs) just with, like, the stories of her possibly destroying evidence and, like, everything else, like... Doesn't look great for her case, yeah. No, but but she was, you know, not guilty and um, continued to actually live in this town for the rest of her life. (laughs) So, pretty, uh, pretty wild. (laughs) So, we have rolled the creds. 
Mm -hmm. essentially. What do we think of this movie overall? You know, just two and a half for me. Yeah. It was three stars right after watching, but after see like really getting into it, like there's some there's a lot of like fun and like it's a good enough movie. I don't know. What are you giving it? Well, I think I'm gonna go two. Even. Okay. Yeah. I think that this movie well, first of all, I already said I think Lizzie Borden has been done to death. I'm over Lizzie sure, Borden. Sure, sure, sure. I also think the casting was a little insane, even though I love both of them dearly. I'm all for the casting. <laughs> Go fucking nuts. Yeah. I just don't know if they fit in this time period. I also think that the actual story of Lizzie Borden herself, in my opinion, seemed irrelevant to this movie. Because I think that the story that they were trying to tell was more about, like, the themes of like oppression and feminism yeah. and like feeling suffocated and stifled by men uh, and society's expectations of women uh, specifically. I see what you mean. Yeah, they kind of just like foisted the Lizzie Borden story onto these themes. They, yeah, they kind of used it as a conduit to like t- yeah. get across these messages. And in that respect, to me, it almost felt like The Other Lamb, TBT movie we previously covered on the pod, that also kind of had a forced feminist theme. Not that, you know, we're against feminism or whatever. No, totally. But it just felt like the entire movie, anything could have happened. It wouldn't really matter. The movie is about just letting you know that women have been oppressed and we're not having it anymore. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now we're taking back the power or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Killing men yeah. and our oppressors. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, and, you know, <laughs> ends in pretty much the same way that the other lamb ended. <laughs> I don't even, you know what? I don't even know how that movie ended. I, I don't think they killed I can... the cult leader, remember? Oh yeah. <laughs> and strung him up on the trees. <laughs> and then all the cool, women I ran free. Uh, I gotta say. Would you would I you recommend know. seeing this movie? Um I find it to be tough to say, T V H. Uh I also am kind of disgusted at how many text shortcuts I'm saying out loud today. <laughs> It's fine. You've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> That's true. Got to yeah. make it shorter. I I don't know if I would recommend this or not. Yeah, I. it would really depend on the person. I mean, there are pros to the movie. Totally. We love the two ladies. Uh, we love the sex scene, sort of. Yep. We most 70% love the sex scene. Um, we love that Done. it exists. The murder, the murder scene. The murder uh, the, scene was really good. I, the dead bodies, I liked. At least the dead yeah. dad. The dead mom, you didn't really see that much. I know she fell face down. Yeah. She's chopped in the back. Yeah. Uh, it it would. I'm just on the depend. fence. I'm on the. We're on the fence with the recommendation. Blanket statement though. If yeah. you're like, would you recommend this to like my coworker? No. <laughs> no. I would never recommend this to a normal. <laughs> no, not a normal. I, I'd, I'd have to see, like, oh, like... Freaks my... only. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Someone who's just like, oh, I love Chloe Seventy, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, yeah. well, if you want to check out a movie that is worth watching of Chloe Seventy's, mm-hmm. uh, if you are if a fan of Chloe If you're interested in, in queerness at all. Yes. I think that's really the main draw for the film, is the queer vibes. Yeah, pretty much. So, wow, it's our first one that we've been, like, so undecided over recommending or not. I know. It's usually more cut and dry, but this... It just depends. That's all I can say. Now it's time for... Scream Vomit. Well, you want to know what I just watched? Yes. Uh, The other night I watched Twilight. Hell yeah! Case too weak <laughs> for you. <laughs> it was. Uh, okay, w- tell me what you think. Cause, wait, first of all, was this your shit. first time watching it or what? First time, I watched it. I went to see it in theaters with a girlfriend at the time when it came out in So 08. you were not watching the movie, let's say. No, I was mostly focused on a little uh, 
I don't make it out action. A little <laughs> boy yo 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 I don't I loved know. it. La, 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 la. <laughs> At any rate, um, I hated it. It sucked. Also, different experience watching it in 2000 whenever it came out versus now, too. Gotta say. Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. <laughs> but yeah, it, it blows. It's not... It's, it's really bad. <laughs> it's just like... And the whole time, you're like, what the... Edward sucks so much. He's like literally abusive and she's instantly like, I'm in love with you. Okay. Yep. Codependency much. Like, it's is a, so bad. <laughs> it's a bad movie. <laughs> Lindsay and I agreed it's a bad movie yeah. for teenage girls to watch. Oh, God. And it's yeah. all teenage girls consumed for a yes. while. Mm-hmm, true. And it's just fucking insane. I um, remember when I was in high school, I was part of a book club, of course. I was in every single club there was. Um, sure, sure. And the book club was all girls. There was no guys in this book club. And all the girls were... Um, obsessed with the books with the twilight books and yeah. i for the longest time was like i'm that's garbage okay i'm not reading that fucking vampire love story no i couldn't think yeah. of anything more lame but eventually i did read them they finally conned me into it but the girls were obsessed for the longest with yeah, the story totally. i mean it's entertaining i will say uh, oh, at least at the time, especially it was entertaining. Yeah. But when I read it now, well, I haven't read the books in a long time. But when I watch them now, even the movies, I am consumed with how terrible the men are in these stories and <laughs> how young girls are taught to think that that is normal and okay. Yeah, it's not. It's it's. And that those and this has come up so many times. Those like teenage like i would i just met you but i would die for you and oh, like totally. my life cannot be complete without you in it just like that such what's the word for that even like that that end all like apocalyptic like <laughs> like <laughs> version uh, of what relationships yeah just making a mountain out of a molehill kind of bullshit like yes thinking it matters so dramatic yeah yeah yeah, yeah. blowing it out of proportion yeah. Yeah, it fucking don't watch. I think that's harmful don't. for teenagers, for young it people. It is. Yeah, and it's what they were fed for like four movies. It, Absolutely. Like, did And continue uh, to be fed through teen media, I have oh, to yeah. say. For a lot of it's it. It's bad. Yeah. And uh, I don't love that for teens. But no, that being said, sucks. I do find the movies entertaining. I will watch them. Uh, I will not. <laughs> I will not be canceled. <laughs> Uh, just now when I can like act I can see what's bad about everything. Yeah, um, totally. I get it. It's not unhealthy for me no more. No. I'm normal. <laughs> you have the awareness. You can yeah. you, you have the, the glasses from they live. Yeah. And therefore the the movies cannot harm me, so I can just get exactly. the entertainment out of them now. Uh so it's Exactly. Safe. I'm safe age. <laughs> yeah, you're twenty one. I'm twenty 20- <laughs> Yes, you that's true. You can consume Twilight. <laughs> I'm 21. I can legally yeah. consume Twilight. <laughs> I think even uh, at 21, for a lot of people, w- this would not be safe. Even it wouldn't. You got to be over 25 for this one, at least. No, I, I'd even <laughs> say it wouldn't hurt to say 30. Yeah, I'm that's not fair. even 30, but I, I I'm I in felt, the safe zone still. <laughs> yeah, I felt bad watching it. I felt yeah. I shouldn't be watching this. Maybe yeah, because it's made for kids. Yeah, that's true. And if you don't have like the nostalgic component to it at all, then I don't know like how you would feel about watching. I it. did not need to think about making out with my freshman year girlfriend. Yeah. In the Keystone <laughs> movie theater. While making out with your current girlfriend <laughs> on your couch. Yeah, because that's all I do during <laughs> movies, folks. Gross. Uh, but wait, so you're not going to watch the other ones? <laughs> Probably not. Those things are fucking long. They are. The last two are good. Here's what I'll say. Yeah. I feel like I can waste my time better. That might be true. <laughs> That's all. I. The I, last I, two are good, though. Gotta say. Ugh. I don't want to talk about Twilight anymore. You don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> the other movie I watched was a another bad movie. I watched the fucking strangers strangers is that the one where they like break into a random person's house and they're just like yeah it's it's Liv Tyler and some yeah other guy 
I saw that one in theaters. I remember just a little bit about it, not much. It's just a lot of good it's a lot of good jump scares, but yeah. like nothing substantial and it's big reveal at the end. Spoiler alert for the fucking strangers. And they're like, Why did you do this to us? And the fucking three baddies just say like, Well, because you were home. Mm-hmm. It's like, ooh, isn't that scary? And Lindsay accurately pointed out, like, that's not, that doesn't happen. Like, that's a stupid, that's a cop-out. I've seen this a couple of times where, like, the scariest thing is supposed to be that uh, there's no motive, that it's just random. That's not that scary. I watched a movie with a similar theme. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, was that all that you watched? Y- yeah, pretty much. So I watched Scream this week. Okay. Uh, yeah. Rewatch, of course. I've seen it a hundred times, but it's been a long yeah. time since I watched it. And knowing how it ended, I just thought about how it ended the whole time, you know. But oh my god, just the greatest cast in the world. I mean, uh, you have rocks. everyone in the movie. Yeah. I mean, yeah. fucking Drew Barrymore, Nev Campbell, Skeet Ulrich, Matthew Lillard, yeah. Cor- Courtney Cox, David Arquette. Yeah. Um, Jamie Kennedy's in it. The Fonz. Rose McGowan. <laughs> oh, yeah. Rose McGowan is in it, and she's incredible. Yeah, just the cast is insane. The movie, not as scary anymore. Well, sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I definitely, like, now that I'm older watching it, like, see a lot more of the references it was making to the classics, you know, which yeah, I... Yeah. We didn't know all the classics at the time that I watched it in 1990, whatever. I still think, though, enjoyable, enjoyable movie, especially if you haven't seen oh, yeah. it and don't know how it ends. Because I, just knowing how it ends the whole time, you're just like, I know who's, I know who the killer is already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Skeet, such a good bad guy, too. Classic. Oh, he's outstanding. Iconic Skeet. He's um, so iconic gross. hair. You, you can't. You'll never forget the hair. The slick back. <laughs> Nev Campbell, uh, probably my queer awakening <laughs> between Hell yeah. between that movie and uh, Wild Things, <laughs> which came out around the same time, I think. Um, yeah, yeah. Queer awakening for me, got to say, Nev Campbell. Um, so, yeah, great movie. Um, but yeah. it also had, you know, at the end, they're like, oh, the whole thing is there's no motive. We're just killing people for fun. And that's, yeah. that's scarier. So it's yeah. kind of the same thing as Strangers. And... <sighs> Of course, I have a show. So I took a pause on Curb. Needed a pause break for that one. So sure. I started watching Insecure. Okay, hell yeah. With our girl Issa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who we did little back episode three. Okay, way TBT. Oh my gosh. Issa's smile. I'll never get past it. I'm charmed right. every time. Yeah. One of the greatest smiles in all of Earth. Ever. Um, Without a doubt. I am maybe like six episodes in right now or something like that so i'm not that far in but i'm really enjoying it so far except that i am not loving watching like a breakup story at this current moment a little triggering (laughs) but uh other than that uh aspect of the show pretty good oh well and also there's no queer characters at this point so okay yeah, it's a little straight for my taste, but it is straight focusing on women, so that is a little more, at least it's not men. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's fun. It's fun so far. I like it. Good. Um, and I love her, yeah. her character in the show, Issa's character. Great. Great show and great music. There's always a, a tight song yeah? at the end and if not a few times in the ep. Yeah. Nice. Fucking sound hounding some shit. Shazamming. <laughs> Sound hound. Is that's not a that's is that a thing? It is a thing, yeah. Wow. It's before Shazam. <laughs> I okay. think it still exists, but anyway. Oh boy, we're long winded today, and by we I mean me, and Oof. that means it's time for plugs. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> plugs. Boy, do you have Ugh. anything you need to plug? Yeah think we just released a new episode of uh how to fire boss Alan's other pod my other pod uh me and my friend howie go through uh joe biden's labor platform sneak peek it's good his labor platform is very good he just won't pursue it anyway go listen uh it's a lot of fun we're up on everything now cool so you can find us, our current pod, <laughs> everywhere online, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all the things, at Screen Vomit, one word. 
We are also now on YouTube. I'm working Ooh. on getting the uh, backlog up, but uh, the whatever 15 most current eps are definitely on there. Um, so subscribe on YouTube if that's your thing. You can watch us on there now. Yeah. Um, same shit, different platform. Subscribe on your podcast app too if you're not already subscribed, and leave us a little rating and review, please. Um, oh, please. Please, we need more rating and review. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, and yeah, you can find us everywhere, of course. You can also send us an email at screenrummetpod at gmail.com. Uh, you can tweet us with your thoughts on this movie or other movies. Let me know if I'm canceled for not liking the movie. I don't know what the general public's feelings were on this movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like uh, Google users 81. Yeah, and the one person who commented on my post of watching this movie was like, oh, hell yeah, I loved this movie. So sorry, Mateo. (laughs) Uh, If you're listening. Um, All right, next week we will be watching The Devil All the Time, which uh, will be the return of the patent stands for that one. And We need them, our bread and butter. It's going to be our uh, 50th episode, so very special F for us. So... um, Check out that one, too, and we'll see you next time. Okay, bye. Bye.